This is Chicken Ball. Come at us, bro. Welcome back to the Chicken Ball Podcast. The only thing worse than listening to this podcast is actually watching the team in which we discuss at this point in time. Guys, you know, I'm we're going with a full uh, full cast today. Um, and I, I don't really want to talk about the defensive mistakes. I don't really want to talk about the missed opportunities because it's something we've been talking about now for at least the last three months. I mean, it's it's gotten pretty bad. Like, I know a few of us have, uh, you know, deactivated or at least uh, taken the, the Twitter app off our phone just to stop dealing with the toxicity, whether it's the racism towards Sun, Davinson Sanchez, uh, you know, Daniel Levy as well. I mean, normally it's done by cowards who hide behind, uh, you know, anonymous accounts as well. But it, it's become a really unpleasant place, you know. Obviously, you know, a game that we all love this much is what causes, you know, people to be this attached. But honestly, like, if you're the type of person that feels the need to abuse somebody like that, like, you probably need more to live for than a team on Sunday morning, right? Okay. Right? Like, you need a little bit more going on in your life if it makes you this upset. You know, you know, behind the scenes, we fight all the time. Um, and it's hard to find a narrative right now. Ryan, I, I actually thought it might be, you know, useful to start with you just because over the last couple of weeks, you've started to kind of change your tune just a little bit. So I'm kind of where you think the team sits. Why don't you start us off? Yeah, no, I think um, it's been uh, kind of like a, a buildup of things, right, over the last couple of months. Um, you know, I was just thinking about it because um, I was looking at, you know, some, some extended highlights from our game against Man City in, in what was it, October, November. And I just look how organized, how passionate we were that match. Um, and to see where we are now, it's like, what has happened since then? Um, you know, obviously we went away to Liverpool. We all hopped on here. We were super uh, fired up for that game. Um, we thought, you know, it could give us a little bit of distance. Um, at the top of the table at the time um, to really carry us on. I don't think we any of us thought we were going to win the league, but um, I think, you know, with the uncertainties going on, we thought that, you know, it, it could be our season. Um, but since then, it's like literally since December, it's like every, the house has fallen completely and the foundation's cracked. There's multiple cracks in the foundation. And, you know, the basement is just flooding at the moment. Um, that's how I look at it. So... Um, you know, we're obviously out of Europa, uh, not in the top four, only six points behind. There's still, there's still points to play for, but it just doesn't, it doesn't look promising right now. Now, you know, I was, I was wondering though specifically, because this, you know, this pod and this group for the most part has been pretty unanimous that we don't think Jose Mourinho is the problem. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I still think everybody feels that way, but I know you've been feeling, a, you've been placing a little more blame on him recently. You know, what were anything, right. that's, anything specifically that's kind of changed your, your opinion on that? So I think um, if you look at towards the end of Pochettino's tenure, and I hate I hate to compare the two or even make comparisons to the two because they're totally two do two totally different managers and situations, but you can start to see that um, they're they both lashed out at, towards uh, questions from the media, um, you know, towards the end, and you're starting to see um, there might be a little bit of discomfort there. And I think Mourinho has these tendencies everywhere he goes um, when it's coming near to an end, when he sees that he's starting to lose the dressing room, he does lash out and he tries to protect the players, but I don't think he, he says the best things um, and he doesn't go about it the right way at times. But, you know, I'll, I think we can all agree we're, we're sick of these players being stuck up for in the media. Um, they've needed this type of person, this type of manager, um, to, to call them out, but I think it's just gotten to a point where it's putting the whole squad in jeopardy and it could be, um, you know, ruining, you know, future incomings. And then obviously players that want to leave our club at the moment. So um, it, I don't think it's, it's not Mourinho hundred percent. I think we all can agree. Um, that's one thing we do agree on. Um, but I think the splitting of the dressing room, um, is what's causing all this divide and all these stories to come out in the media to ask these stupid questions at times. And he feeds it though, by, by lashing out in a way, um, you know, I truly believe that. So uh, it, it's tough, man. Um, you know, obviously I love Mourinho. I'm a Porth fan. So I followed his career. I didn't, I never liked him at Chelsea, but uh, you know, when he came to the club, you know, I was excited. Um, I don't know. 
you know, I, if we're going to keep him, we need to back him 100%. Simple as that. Um, and, and get him what he needs and what he wants. And if the squad needs an overhaul, it needs an overhaul. Yeah, I, uh, I I think that's a pretty, how everybody pretty much feels right now. Now, Mort, I remember what is it, a year and a half ago uh, when Poach's last days were incoming and we didn't know it. And I asked you specifically, I think just over Twitter, you know, do you think another manager could get more out of this squad? And you said yes, and I agreed. And, you know, I think we saw a little bit of that to begin the year and maybe in last year and there's a little bit of progress. And now all of a sudden we're seeing the team going backwards. So I'm going to ask the same question again. Do you think, based on what we see, you know, in Twitter land, another manager could get more out of his current squad? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there. I, you know, players are a product of their system, right? I mean, I mean, I look at Jesse Lingard rotting on the bench not even the bench sometimes for one squad and having a player of the year season with another squad purely based on how he is used in that system. And I think a lot of our stupid ass fan base doesn't understand these fundamental concepts around the sport. So to answer your question, the answer is always going to be yes, right? There's always going to be a manager who can, who plays in a way that is perfectly conducive to these players and he may be able to get more, but that does not mean that manager will get results. Pochettino had this team firing on all cylinders and we still never won anything. So that's not enough, right? And I think that's the key here. It's not just about playing beautiful football because we did that for a long time and we still won nothing. So what, what is it? What do you want from your team? And for me, it's always been very simple. It's winning trophies. I played sports my whole life. I didn't play the fucking play pretty and cute. We went in there to win every single match we ever played. So I think that, so yeah, another manager may come in. Yeah, he may have a firing, but no, they're not going to win. And the reason they're not going to win is because, like Ryan said, the basement is flooded and the rotting has, it probably started a while ago, man, right? That, there was probably a, there's probably a slow leak, Ryan, and it was already rotten in the woods yeah. and now we're just seeing more water come tumbling in, but the thing is, these players, no matter who the manager is, is, are not going to win. We know this now. They don't have the mentality. They've never had it. We always think of these guys as that 16, 17 squad that was out there just whooping everybody's ass, scored the most goals in the league, conceded the least, and dropped out of every trophy conversation along the way. They're not going to win. So what do you do? You, we all agree, and most people on Twitter line also agree, we need new players. Okay? All right. We need new players. Who's going to manage it? Because no matter, no matter how, th there's a sequencing in all of this. Like a, a manager needs to be able to pick his players so he can get them to play in the way he wants to play so he has the ability to deliver the best kind of results. And for me, again, if you look back at when Jose came, they took the team over for the first nine or 10 matches, we were in elite form. And then the wheels fell off because Kane got injured, Sonny got injured, and Dombla got injured. Fucking Bergwijn was leading the line for a while. Lamella was out. Lucas was out. So that was not a good judgment. We started this season off gangbusters. Top of the league. Then we take a small injury to Gio, but the bigger problem was we never had a third goal scorer. Always Kane and Sonny. Always every decent coach figured out foul Kane in midfield and Tottenham can't do shit because we did not have a third goal scorer. We have shitty defenders who could not hold on to leads. And that's how this whole thing came crumbling down. So I am still of the opinion, give him the players he needs and let him win you trophies. And then you figure out what you want to do. Because going out there trying to buy other players now and trying to win something with them is not going to happen. Jose Mourinho will get this team to win a trophy. He has it in him. Anybody who disagrees with that, is, I mean, that is not even a valid opinion, right? It, it's, there's no evidence to state that he cannot win a trophy, right? So, so you know, like, get that bullshit out of here. But like Ryan said, you, you, like you need the players. You got to bring yeah. in players that can play the low block. You got to bring in players that can play the counter. And you got to bring in that creative midfielder who can tear apart defenses who are going to be petrified of you, who are going to sit back, and you're going to need that person. So we're still three, four players away for like Jose to work, but I say let him work. Yeah, honestly, you bring it. You bring up a great point to transition to, to what I wanted to talk about. And you mentioned, you know, a good manager – recognizes what he has at his disposal and, and uses it well. I think there's a huge dichotomy here because this idea that Mourinho is a, you know, a dinosaur, one approach manager, blah, blah, blah. 
I think there's like some preface there that he shouldn't, that he should be looking at Spurs and doing something differently with them. Um, but if you look at our defense, like you just pointed out, he has no option. We've talked about this before. He has no option but to sit back, play a block, defend as a total unit, and then rely on Kane and Son. Kane and Son got injured. Things went the wrong direction. I think the 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 I, I point to to he came in right away. We saw in the document or documentary and and told Sanchez, "You're strictly not good enough to play for me." In in a roundabout way, right? Right away, um, he knew it. He started playing Eric Dyer center back. Eric Dyer seemed to be the one person that he trusted. Eric Dyer has not done a good enough job at all. But he that the fact that he immediately plugged Dyer at center back said, I don't have a good center back at this club. I'm going to try Eric Dyer, right? Our defense is shambolic. And until we replace the back line, and I'm, the majority of it, like even Regulon hasn't been good for a while. And we've talked about that. And I'm willing to give him time. I, lo I love the kid, but like, until we get the back line worked out, we are never going to win no matter who's here. Like, and, and I think it's important to point out, I've been called a Jose fanboy. I'm not a Jose Mourinho fanboy. I was never a fan of Jose Mourinho. I was a fan of Tottenham <laughs> fucking winning, and he was the person that I believed could get me to Tottenham winning trophies. So fuck off with mm. that shit. It's so irritating. Like, it's actually offensive. Like, I want what's best for Tottenham. I don't fucking care about Jose Mourinho. But he's what's best for Spurs right now, in my opinion. If we can sign three or four really talented players, we're right there. But if we replace Mourinho with some douchebag, the, the mentality changes, the philosophy changes. Now you don't need four players. You need four players and a team to get on board with an entirely different direction. And it's a lot, man. Like, I don't care about Mourinho. I care about Spurs winning, and this is how we do it right now. And, and if we win a couple of trophies and Nagelsmann comes in in 18 months, I'll be excited, man. I like change. I like refreshing things. Like, but that's not what we need to do right now. Um, so I don't know. I, I had to address that, man, because the Jose fanboy thing is is like offensive and irritating. Like, I just want Tottenham to, to win. And I can I can separate Spurs from life. Like, I'm fucking good. I'm chilling. But when it comes to Tottenham, I'm fucking like devastated, man. I'm like, it's it's heartbreaking right now. Not only because of what's happening on the field, but because our club is, is being split down the middle unnecessarily. Like it should not be happening. Like, and there's a media bias. There's a fan bias that plays into all of this. We heard Jose say it had, I said someone shouldn't feed their child. You would fucking chastise me. Like I would never be allowed back on this podium. And then someone else says it. Ah, it's funny. You know, like it's just ridiculous, man. And I think those two biases from both the fans and the media is a huge part of why our club is getting ripped in half. It's not Jose's fault, man. Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. I mean, Klopp does the same thing, right? And, you know, you don't see the same kind of thing. And and I agree, Scott. You know, like, I'm not a Jose fanboy either. I never was before he came in. And I, I wasn't even that excited when he did come in. You know, the team was in shambles at that point. You know, it, it's we all have such a recency bias, you know, and you hear people saying things like, this is the worst I've ever seen Spurs. Like I, I want to put them in touch with Bill, the dude who runs Vancouver Spurs, who's been a fan for 35 years, who's watched Spurs get relegated. Go tell him this is the worst you've ever seen Spurs, right? Everything is relative and nothing is as good as it seems or as bad as it seems. You know, one thing for me where, where, you know, I think I've changed my view a little bit is I agreed with Mort when Pochettino was sacked and I thought, okay, another manager can get more out of this team. Now I understand that probably wasn't true now does that mean that they shouldn't have sacked Pochettino probably not you know he had five and a half years five years to win five and a half years I guess it was to win something and like Mort said we still didn't win and there were opportunities to win that you know there's a few pundits saying should have won the year that Leicester won could have won the year that Mort alluded to where he had the most goals the least goals conceded right like he made mistakes in his tenure as well and so you kind of feel like his time was up but you know now you, like you guys both all alluded to is just this rot and the rot clearly started a long time ago you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint anything, you know, in history. There's usually a catalyst, whether it was, you know, Erickson's form starting to take a dip and not having that creativity in midfield, whether it's Vertonghen and Alderweireld, who are arguably one of, if not the best partnership in Europe, just getting older and losing their form, right? Like, it's all of those things that start to combine, not signing anybody for 18 months. And so, but now here we are again, fast forward 18 months, and, you know, we're, we're in the same position that we were, you know, in before, if not worse, because, you know, we, we had come off success and we figured that, you know, Jose Mourinho was a winner. He was going to help us win, but there's only so much that one dude can actually do. Uh, you know, Ryan, you know, obviously you've been following, you know, the news, you know, if people love to say, oh, who's going to come in, you know, it's going to be Nagelsmann. It's going to be, you know, 
uh, you know, Steven Gerrard, you know, whatever name you feel like throwing out there, Allegri, you know, do you think there's anything? What the fuck said Steven or... Gerrard? <laughs> oh, it's out there. It's looks... absolutely out there. Are, are you serious? It, it, Lampard, man. Yeah, He's yeah, fucking perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Listen, let's hey, it. let's just fucking throw Saul Campbell in there too, fellas. Why don't we? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> but Ryan, is there are there any are there any kind of rumors out there that you think actually have any legs to them, or is it just the media looking for clickbait? No, I, like if you look at the names that are rumored, it's, it's not too flattering at all, or it's, or inspiring in any way. So, um, you know, like like I shared with you guys yesterday, like I'd rather just keep Mourinho. Um, if those are the options at the end of the day, um, you know, does Allegri want to come to Tottenham? Who knows? Um, yeah, I did read that he does want to come back into management. Um, whether that's in Italy, La Liga, you know, Syria, like no, like nobody actually knows like what he wants. So at the end of the day, like that's, that's something that's, that we're not being, you know, rumored with, or somebody we're not being rumored with uh with at all so uh who knows really um nagelsman seems to be like the favorite um i think we i think we actually um had held discussions with them before we hired Mourinho. so um i think they they sounded that situation out and um you know maybe they they decided that it was too early and obviously levy always wanted to hire Mourinho at one point um and have him managed on him so um you know, I think at the end of the day, these the, the links that you know that are out there aren't too uh, too encouraging or inspiring in any ways. And I'd rather just mm-hmm. keep Mourinho and back him um, at the end of the day. Ryan, to, can you to, imagine? Can you imagine a manager like Allegri, uh, who managed one of the most defensively stout teams in all of Europe, trying right. to manage this fucking squad of bums like he's not well Ale- yeah no well allegri <laughs> didn't have the best well he didn't have the best team at milan and then he- when he went to juventus he didn't have great players either um he he, he has like you said he- his defensive system is very organized he kind of he built juventus from what conte left them in and it was right it was a three five two when you know conte brought that over to chelsea and obviously yep. they exploded um and he stayed with that for a year or two but he he did adapt to his team and he switched it because he yep. knew that Chiellini, um, Barza, Barza I always fucking butcher the name, and Benucci were getting old. So Being he did old that. And slow, yeah. yep, yep, but yep, the yep, reason yep. why he left Juventus was because he clashed with the board there on on a rebuild, kind of how Pochettino did with Levy. So, yeah. you know, Levy, Levy doesn't like, you know, the, the clash of heads. or he, I mean, he brought in Mourinho because Mourinho was obviously desperate for a job. Um, and he was free. And, it, and he wanted to obviously have Mourinho manage this club at one point. Um, yeah. it, it's something to, for his ego, but, um, you know, is Allegri attracted to the club? Who knows? Who knows if even Nagelsmann attracts this club in this project at the moment? See, uh, it, you know, maybe we're going to cycle in this like 30 seconds, right? I think because I just read today that, that Tottenham are one of the top 10 riches mm-hmm. uh, like football clubs in the world according to Forbes, right? So, the allure is there, right? Like there's a there's managers out there who will want to manage Tottenham simply for their own resume. So I think I think we shouldn't fear going up for good managers because again, no matter what condition we're in, we were in the Champions League final a couple of years ago, right? Like, you know, we were just a stone's throw away from winning the league just three or four years ago. And many managers can justify the last 18 months as just a bad trip for us. Um, so I think that we're still a very attractive destination. And it's only going to get more attractive, especially when the stadium opens up and the sound you hear in New White Hart Lane and the events you have like boxing and the rugby and, and the NFL. You, managers are going to be want to be around that. They're going to want to be associated with that, right? So I do think this is still a great destination. And I think that no matter what happens with Jose, I, I think it's important to acknowledge that we're still a very attractive destination for a manager and we will be for the foreseeable future, right? Say what you want about Levy. There's no better businessman in all of Europe than he is. And he's taken a team that was, you know, fighting relegation and playing in a tiny yet very cool stadium, but it's really shitty smelling bathrooms to one of the best sporting venues in the world. So no, more, what about, what about, 
What about what about players then? So we talk about managers, and again, there's obviously all the rumors come out before United that Harry Kane is going to ask to leave if we don't make the Champions League. There's another article this morning saying Tottenham won't sell him to a Premier League rival. I mean, like, you know, there, to me, take away the fact that, like we've discussed, there's no actual quotes. It's all hearsay and that sort of thing. Take that away, and let's just assume it's true for just an argument's sake. There's, what, two teams in the world who will actually spend the kind of money required to buy Harry Kane during COVID, where stadiums are empty and, you know, merchandise is down, all that kind of stuff. There's, you know, there's Manchester City and there's Paris Saint-Germain, you know, the two oil money teams. I don't think anybody else, you know, I've, I've heard a few people say, well, Manchester United, you know, spend dumb money sometimes, but even they don't spend the kind kind of money that Manchester City does, especially in a bad economy. So, so you know, if we lose Harry Kane, which I don't think is going to be this year anyways, based on the circumstances, like, is it an attractive place for players to come into? We don't pay shit. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't pay the wages that even our shittier neighbors are willing to pay. I think we're attractive in the sense that we're in London, one of the top 10 richest clubs in the world, brand new stadium, great training facilities, blah, blah, blah. But would you take a job for less money? Some people do, some people don't. I know, Scotty, you're in that field. Do people take, do people take equivalent jobs for less money because, because their desk is made of mahogany? You know, I, 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 it's a, I know it's a, it's a joke, but I'll answer the question seriously for context sake. <laughs> People will take a job for less money if they are in love with the direction and infrastructure within an organization. We have some decent infrastructure. We have, I don't like our direction at the moment. So I think that maybe helps us answer that question well, or whatever. I'll go ahead. Well, let, let, let's pause here because I think before COVID hit, uh, um, we're talking about wages and less money. I mean, we, we bought an Odomale for, you know, 55 million pounds and we put them sure. on 200 grand a week. We put him right up there with Kane right away. So, I mean, if we're willing to spend the money, which I think we are, then I think all the all these points are irrelevant. I mean, we literally bought Ndombele and put him on same wages as Kane, our best player at the club. You're without right. Ndombele was proving such a, a bad time. Yeah. You know. Sorry, so, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's all good. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think the money's there. Like, oh, we're paying half of Bale's wages here. Like, the the money is obviously there. Where like you're saying, five million for the direction. Though. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's just yeah. it. Like, the infrastructure is there. We know there's going to be streams of revenue. Like, we know that's going to continue to increase. Like, I, I honestly, I do. If I have any sympathy for Enoch, it's that a project that started in 2001 basically came to its peak and then COVID hit and that's just like really shitty timing it really was um and I do have sympathy there now I think things could have been done better for a while but I, I have some sympathy there for them so I do think we need to give them a little bit of credit and give them a chance to show us that they're willing to spend once all of this ends um but but we, like Ryan said it's just it's the direction and it's the the the, the culture right now and now Again, I'm going to say we have a toxic culture. People are going to blame Mourinho. That's not what I'm saying. I explained earlier why I think we have a toxic divider right now, and I don't blame that on Mourinho, but we do, and that's a little bit concerning to me. I also think, like you said, Mort, when you the only way that you're ever going to get somebody to come back up the best striker in the world is to fucking pay them. So, like, it's, it's literally our only option. Like, no one's going to take a pay cut and less minutes like I promise you that you know and and Harry Kane I don't want him gone ever I of course that's never what I'm saying here but he does pose a challenge for Tottenham by being the best striker on the planet until we're gonna pay someone to be the the backup to the best striker on the planet um and they may even need to make as much as Kane like maybe more I don't know but um yeah, yeah it's, it's a problem so yeah, well, Scott, you know what's interesting? I was thinking about this yesterday because one thing I did, like, I actually underestimated how good that Manchester United were. I figured they're just a product that everybody else sucks besides yeah. Manchester yeah. City, but actually getting the chance to watch them. Now, this is also dependent on Paul Pogba feeling like being one of the best players in the world, which he doesn't feel like on a game-by-game -game basis. But when he is, and he was yesterday, especially in the second half, to be that big and that strong, have that kind of vision with that kind of passing range, and then you've obviously got Bruno in there, and even Scott McTominay looked pretty good. And so I look at that lineup from top to bottom and in nearly every single position they are better than us and in a position they're not better than us which is up front at striker like 
Edson Cavani, even at, what is he, 33, 34 years old, is not that big of a drop from Harry Kane. So again, I am not arguing that we sell Harry Kane. I think that'd be catastrophic. But like, but it is an interesting point that you've got this guy that, you know, really is so intimidating for anybody else coming in because they're never going to play. But, you know, you look at the options like, well, what if we had, you know, two guys who, you know, are hurt all the time, not that he's hurt all the time, but if you had, you know, you could strengthen other parts. And like maybe, you know, you do drop off in your quality of striker, like, but maybe it's not that bad when you look at, you know, what Manchester United has with Cavani up front or Martial up front. So anyways, I just thought it was an interesting point that you said that you don't want him gone, but, you know, you look at all the options, you know, is, you know, you look at what happened with Liverpool when they sold, uh, Oh God, I can't even remember his name now. It's been that long. Coutinho. Um, yeah, Coutinho, exactly. And they certainly don't regret that. Anyways, kind of an aside. But, no, no, uh, you, but yeah, guys, you're right. Yeah. And I, I think I'm gonna. I, I want to pass it to Mark because I think you know he has he has something to say. But I think I, I will say that it, we all know that if we are gonna truly rebuild a squad, and I think that definitely happens if we sack Mourinho then selling Kane or or probably Son, one of those two things is going to have to happen for us to truly do that too. And so that's why I, I was asked yesterday, do you marry Saki Mourinho and Kane leaving? And I said, absolutely fucking lutely. Like no questions mm-hmm. asked. I marry Kane leaving to Mourinho leaving and vice versa. Um, because it, it was, even if Kane didn't want to leave just because Mourinho left, like I might not even be saying that Mourinho leaving says makes Kane say, oh, but I'm gone too. I'm saying the club will have to sell him to rebuild because we'll have to do that if Mourinho's sacked. Um, so there's a, there's layers to this, like without a question. But sorry, Mark. No, I, I yeah, I mean, I think I think that's that's the game we need to be playing mentally is who who do you bring in and 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 then who do you who do you want selecting who you bring in, right? I mean, if you if you give Jose his players. Great, let's let's go back him and everybody shut the fuck up. Back to your club, back your managers. We're back in the stands next year. Let's go, right? Let's fucking go. However, if you're not going to back him, sack his ass. Sack yeah. him now. Bring in exactly. Mason. Bring it like bring in a caretaker. Like pull Ryan Mason up. Do you know? Do something now because you mm-hmm. only have seven Premier League matches left, and you have one trophy match left. Jose is not going to turn this around in the next eight matches, fellas. Let's just be honest, right? We, luckily, the teams we play are going to get progressively worse, but still, it's not like we're paying relegation sides every week. We've got Everton on Friday. They're going to be up for it. I mean, they just got throttled. Uh, like, the, like, did they end up losing today? I, I forgot what the score was, but they weren't looking. Let me see. Let me see what happened. No, they ended up like drawing Brighton. But, you know, again, it, 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 I don't think Jose is going to be able to turn this around in the next eight matches so either you slog through this knowing full well that you're backing him next summer and that's why you're going through this misery or you say fuck it roll the dice pull up ryan mason if you're not gonna back jose fucking the fire his ass eat the 30 mil whatever the hell is that you know that a closet or whatever the hell i was talking about put ryan mason in and see if we get the new manager bump is that bump enough to get us europa is that bump yeah. enough to maybe pull a miracle in the league cup final if the answer is no to both, what have you lost? Because that's kind of how we're trending yeah. with Jose right now. You stick with Jose yeah. because you're going to back him in the summer. If you're not going to back yeah. him in the summer, I want to see that club update coming like tomorrow morning. Well, and so many people will argue yeah. again, like more, you, sh- you shared a couple of screenshots yesterday of just the defensive breakdowns. And, you know, some people who are anti marine you're going to point to that and say, well, that's the coach's job to, you know, to focus on the positioning. But I mean, like you look at that, I mean, that first goal that was ruled out that Cavani scored, like, what is Dyer doing? Now, again, I, I get it. I get the fact that somebody's going to turn around and say, well, why is he starting? Fine. But have we been better when he didn't start? Not really. Have we been be- Has Sanchez made mistakes? Plenty. Has Alderweireld? Absolutely. Like, all those guys, it doesn't really make a difference. And, like, I think that's the thing we're, we're saying is he is making changes. I mean, I think that was the perfect example of bringing in Eric Dyer at the very beginning of his tenure because he looks around, he's like, shit. Like, I do not have much to work with here. And that's, right. he knew it. Pochettino knew it. Everybody knows how bad we are defensively. We have an elite <laughs> attack, two guys, preferably three, and a bottom three defense. And I felt like that, you know, now for, you know, 18 months. And more your point about, you know, do you bring in somebody, you know, kind of fresh, like, you know, United did with, with Ole. Now, I mean, again, like, I, I realize they're second in the league, but so what? Like, are they, I don't yeah. think they're, are they in, it's been out of Europe. are they in, obviously, the community, are they still in the FA Cup? Yeah, uh, yeah you know. I mean they're in they're in the Europa League, right? I think they got to be in the Europa League. Europa, I'd say they have to. But be the reason, favorites too. the reason I, 
the reason I ask is because, okay, let's say they don't win the Europa League, and I don't think they're in any other cups, but like, let's just assume they don't win any cups. Like, so what? So, okay, they finished second. Great. We finished second. Is anybody bragging about it? Same as, as, as West Ham. Like, West Ham have had a great season. They've had good recruits. They've had good coaching. They're still not going to win anything more than Tottenham did. Like, I'm not saying that it's not a big deal to get to the Champions League, but so did we. So what? Right? Like, again, that's what people are talking about. They want anything to grasp onto that's, you know, anti Mourinho. And I think what we're saying is if you're not going to back him, absolutely fire him. You know, I, I yep. said at the beginning of his tenure, I don't think he is necessarily the solution, but he's not the problem. And I think that's kind of where we're at now. So anyways, guys, we're getting towards the end of the show. We like to keep things short. So a couple of quick questions just for each of you. So Ryan, I'm going to start with you. Gareth Bale, here next year or not? Um, I'll say if Mourinho is here, he won't be here. But if not, I feel like he will be. Okay. Scott, <laughs> uh, are we going to see fans back in the stadium next year, next season? Oh, I, I think so. I, 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 I'm not going to say by the first match, but I'd say without a doubt, sometime next season, we start seeing fans, you know, to, to a fullish capacity in the stadium. Um, but I'm also not involved in the United Kingdom's government, so I fucking hope so. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, uh, Mort, Deli Ali, uh, is he the source or one of the key disruptors at Tottenham? Yes. Oh yes. There, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Well, guys, business. I mean that's yep. that's it, right? Like, you know, we, we talked about it at the top of the show. Like, there's no point talking about the defensive miscues or the missed opportunities, even the split in the dressing room. This is all old news. You know, it's we don't think it's gonna be turned around from now to the end of the season. This is going to happen in the off season. You know, hopefully we can at least pull out the Europa League because again, I do think that the revenue is there that does obviously help with acquisitions and outgoing to that sort of thing. But uh, but yeah, anyways, guys, if you're if you're listening to this and you listen too far, just remember don't be a dick on, on the internet. You know, it's it's really unnecessary. We all do it. I get baited into it more than I really should. I serve my 12 hour ban. I didn't apologize and I don't plan to, but we all we all do it. Uh, but like let's try to show a little bit of empathy, you know, not just because we disagree with somebody's viewpoint, especially on the same thing that we all love, right? Mm-hmm. Anyways, so Absolutely. on that note, for for Mort, for Scott, for Ryan, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Spurs. <laughs>